This is 30 years, professor, published, lecturer. Okay. I said, you tell me. And so she did. And she said, well, first there's this, and then that, and there's going to be mm, all mass transit. No, 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 the EVs. And she went around and this and that. And so she finally coalesced a list of five of them. And she said, OK, one, two, three, four, five. And she said, how did I do? And I said, it wasn't the point of the question. The point of the question is, look how long it took you to come up with the name of five solutions that you thought might be the top five. And you are in the one thousandth of one percent of all people on this planet in terms of understanding climate change and global warming. So what do you think the rest of us know? We don't know. We absolutely don't know. And then she asked, she said, well, did I get them right? And I said, no, they're all wrong. <laughs> but not wrong, they just weren't right. You know what I'm saying? They weren't the top five. Um, and I did it two more times to two more household names, by the way. And one of them got one of them right. Uh, so one out of 15. And, and, and these are the people we look to and should, by the way, in terms of their knowledge, their background, their experience. So when we map these solutions, it's not like we're kind of weighing in there and saying, we got a better idea. There was no idea at all. So when we say, and you'll see the cover of the book, it says, the most comprehensive plan ever proposed to reverse global warming. Well, that was easy. No one's ever proposed a plan. <laughs> we could say the most beautiful plan, the most extraordinary plan, any adjective we wanted, we can take the high ground because there's no one there. Okay? And then plan. The, that's, that title of the book, by the way, came from an intern from Stanford at Penguin Random House in the summer. And we were there. He sent it in as the verso for the back cover when we sent out the galleys. We didn't have galleys, it turns out. It was digital, but nevertheless. And it said the most comprehensive plan ever proposed to reverse global warming. And I said, oh, no, we don't, we don't do plans here. We map, measure, and model. That's what we do. And, but then I'm just sitting there on my desk, and I was going, oh, gosh, I think he's right, you know? And, but we didn't make the plan. We found it. This is really important to understand. We didn't make it. We found it. It's here. That humanity has a collective wisdom that's in effect. Every solution that we model is scaling. We didn't model ones that were dead in the water. They're all scaling. Our projections of their growth were, were based on what has happened so far here to date. Our numbers in terms of costs and savings were tamped down in terms of costs going down over time. We used very conservative numbers. We got criticized by our fellows and by, not fellows, by our advisors and by our outside expert reviewers. And it was a consistent criticism, which is you're too conservative, you're too conservative. It's exactly the criticism we wanted. Because any other criticism, would basically undermine our credibility. And these guys just did amazing work, the fellows and, and Chattery. So, I mean, so um, the plan, what we're saying, and you don't hear this, is that humanity has, there's a collective wisdom. It's not top down, it's not from Paris or Marrakesh. Not that what they're doing is extraordinarily important, but that's not where it's coming from. It's not coming from the bottom either. It's coming because when you look top bottom, you're thinking in a different way. If it's a sphere, this is the earth, so forth, it doesn't work that way. It's coming from everywhere, everywhere. And it's coming up, it's rising. And um, this is what surprises food is bigger than energy. Who knew? And. Look, and we'll publish all the data, methodology. Anybody can come and say, oh, you're wrong. I love it. We would love it. But hundreds of people have seen this. You know, I mean, It's like the data is robust and conservative. And the thing is, what you hear about every time about climate change, global warming, energy, 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 energy. You always hear about energy. 
understandable. 62% of the CO2 up there is from combusting fossil fuels, so of course, of course. But that's not the way it works to heal. And there they are, there's a top 20. There's screenshots available. <laughs> <laughs> There was a contest in three Ivy League colleges to name the top five, and I think you, when you posted to my son, you just blew that whole contest. <laughs> it's okay. Um, and here, food, eight of the top 20. Okay. Uh, energy, right? Five. Very, very important. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's so important. But, Five. Solar is number eight. You combine it with rooftop, and then it's number six or seven. Okay. The reason we don't combine things like this or onshore or offshore wind is because they're very different, and so we can't model them in the same model. Um, number one is refrigerants, HFCs. <laughs> Number one solution. We were a little disappointed in some ways. It's like, come on. <laughs> um, HFCs, the Kargali Agreement, the Amendment to the Montreal Protocol that happened uh, last year. And they conservatively said 70 gigatons, but we included was taking these mounds of air conditioners and refrigerators all over the world and actually decommissioning the refrigerants that are in there instead of having them go up into the atmosphere as the copper wears out or is taken away. Um, and here is one of the girls, number six and number seven. Now, what's interesting about this is you'll notice that the gigatons are the same, 59.6. Actually, the reason they're the same is we split down the middle. That is what happens if there is truly family planning in, in this world, which is instead of 10.8 billion people in 2050, there's 9.7. 1.1 billion people less. Now the pathway to that is very different. Educating a girl is gonna take a different path. A family clinic, family planning clinic is about reproductive health and choice and rights and support. So we had we modeled them differently, but we couldn't figure out how to allocate the results between them, and so we just split it down the middle. But here's the important thing: add them up. It's the number one solution. Empowering girls and women is the number one solution to global warming. Wow. Yeah. Okay, it's not a solar panel. It's a woman. <laughs> Think of it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, uh, wow. We were just like, okay. You know, and these numbers, however, are conservative. The World Bank has it at 160 gigatons in 2050. We have 119. Why do they have it higher? Because they used the impact on land. There was less, than, less impact less deforestation. We didn't put it in there, we made a choice to not include it in order to say what I'm saying to you. It's so conservative, that number, and it's still number one. So it's not like tippy toe is number one and you know, no, it is robustly no number one solution. Um, and remember this one. This was the Carbon Mitigation Initiative from Princeton. This is what it looks like in reality. Okay, what does it look like? It looks like nature, it looks like, this is what we're doing. And it, it, there's a kind of a sense like, well, we should just focus on these big ones, the 80-20 rule. We should focus on the top 20% of the solutions because they have 80% of the impact, they do, okay? But that's not true. We should focus on them all. Because if we're going to achieve drawdown, that last 20% is what puts us over the top. So what I'm saying here, there's no such thing as a small solution. This idea that somehow we should all go to one side of the ship and focus on the big solutions is kind of, well, it's very male, put it that way. 
So is drawdown possible? Yeah, it is. Drawdown because of this, and this is stomata, stoma, and guardian cells. Uh, when you lift up a bunch of leaves, you have 100 million in your hands. Um, what they do is they open and, uh, and close. Why? When? How? They computer modeled stomata recently, and they were surprised to find out that stoma uh, actually can um, have memory about weather. They can go back in time, what's going on in terms of weather. They can certainly measure the amount of humidity that's in the air. If a stoma, the stomata is closed all the time, the plant dies. Because this is where CO2 comes in, which they eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is where the water goes out, however. So if it's open all the time, it dies. If it's closed all the time, it dies. So it has to open and close in a very intelligent way. Otherwise, the plant dies. Go out to the forest. Go anywhere and look at all those plants. They're brilliant. They really are. Furthermore, they can hear the dawn chorus. Okay. <laughs> I think, oh, it's morning. Okay. Not only that, they understand the moisture in the plant, the roots, and the soil. And with that calculation and the ambient temperature, they decide when to open and when to close. They, whatever they are, they better clean. And that's what stomata do. And when they eat CO2, they're drawn down. Okay. This you've seen. Um, oops. You went backwards? Oh, we missed a slide. Oh, that's okay. Um, this is the book, quickly. There's the title. We talked about that already. Um, this is our crew, not all of our crew, there's, there's pages in the back. Uh, this is our client, we knew who our client was all the time, so we never confused about who we were working for. Uh, we have a whole thing on language. Language is very important. The ways, the science on climate change is extraordinary. The language is just horrible, <laughs> horrible. Decarbonization, like, that's the problem, not the solution. We decarbonize, we put it up there. That's the name of the problem. We want to recarbonize. Carbon's not our enemy, it's our ally. Um, we talk about negative emissions. That's, that's science speak for you know, drawing down carbon. Uh, I checked in every language in the world, negative emissions means nothing. It means nothing. It's like a negative tree or a negative chair. What's a negative chair? <laughs> it's a negative emission. This is language that's being used by science, even Christiana. Figueres is using this. I mean, this is language that's going to go right over people's heads. And so what we try to do in Drawdown is clean up the language so that it's accessible to everyone. So whether it's a ninth grader or a pipe fitter or a farmer or a brilliant professor, we don't care. It was everybody could understand what we're talking about. So we used methane, we didn't say CH4, we didn't use acronyms, we made it accessible. And we stopped using war metaphors. No fight, no battle, no slashing, no combat. You, you see these things, I saw it, I will name the group, it's a huge organization about stopping climate change. Stop climate change, give us money. That's the last thing in the world you want to do is stop climate change. It's, first of all, you can't. That's for starters. Second, you want the climate to change. It changes every second. It's like, it's like saying stopping ocean currents or wind or sunshine. It's not going to happen. What we can do is reverse global warming. That's what we want to do. And if you say you're going to fight climate change or fight this or the war on, what you're saying is I have a dualistic mind and there's other out there. There's something other. And that is the mindset that caused the problem in the first place. It's 